Why didn't the client hire me is perhaps one of the most common questions freelance designers and even agencies wonder about. And a lack of understanding of this is perhaps the most common reason the freelancers just quit. Not knowing why makes it basically impossible to fix things. And then the dwindling spiral of hopelessness and maybe I'm not good enough and imposter syndrome take over. So in this video, we will discuss the five most common reasons why clients won't hire you and what to do about each. An inevitable aspect of being a freelancer is not getting hired to perform a job you hope for. And it's not always clear why you weren't able to secure that client, even when you felt your experience and your skills were perfectly aligned with what that client needed. So now this is some assuming that they already did reach out to you and you've already had that initial discovery call or the exchange of emails. And they either told you they went somewhere else or what's most common, they vanished without a trace. So here are the five most common reasons clients won't hire you and what to do about it next time it happens to you. Number one, you are underprepared. The first impression is everything and more common than you even might think. Freelancers treat each client interview as a cold call or they find online scripts that apparently work very well and they actually don't. In fact, once a client has reached out to you or has shown some form of interest, the first thing you've got to do, even before you answer that email or get on a call, is to research their company, their industry, and understand what they want, what potential problems they might have that they could be trying to resolve by hiring you to do their designs, and then what bothers them about what their business looks like. You need to understand as much about the client as you can, because then you will be able to communicate the right things and bring value to the table in the conversation. Number two is budget. No matter how amazing you are, budget has a lot to do with whether clients hire you or not. Sometimes you will be out of their league in pricing and that's okay. Not every client is worth your time, but being cheaper is also not the way to win clients. And in fact, the way you price yourself will tell a lot to the client what to expect from you. And if your client values quality, he won't want to go the cheaper route, but you have to be on the same page regarding the budget from the beginning. Always try to be the first person to share your estimated cost of the project. And from there, you can get a sense if this is in their range or not. Be willing to negotiate your price, but not too much. And to learn more about how to price yourself higher to attract more valuable clients, you can check out this video right here. Number three is trust. Trust is everything when it comes down to the final decision from the client to decide who to hire. Who do I trust the most? But trust is made out of many different things, one of which is professionalism. Things like being on time for a meeting, being respectful, but not emotionless, being excited about working with the client, but not over the top that the, you make it look fake. And in the end, the final question the client asks himself is, will this designer get me the results I need or not? Having examples of similar past projects, having testimonials and case studies, and even social proof is a great way to create trust. If the client is hiring you for a logo design, can you show all the other companies that you've worked for? Do you have testimonials or something to show that whoever you worked for is really happy with what they received? Number four is expertise. Do you have the right skills to do what the client wants? And are you familiar with the type of business or industry of this client? Now, a lot of times clients go with other creatives because they show they have more expertise in what they were trying to achieve. Either their portfolio showed it, or they were able to convince the client in that interview about the experience that they have over yours. Because I have an exact expertise in an exact niche and don't talk about things I can't do. I never have a problem with this point. I have plenty of testimonials, reputation, in this industry, years of experience in working in the niche, and my website and messaging speaks to my ideal client. But somehow there are still designers who don't get me and understand the point of niching down. Now, my advice to you is be that specialist. And then the last, but certainly not least reason that someone did not hire you, and really this is one, is usually one of the hardest and most complicated ones to win at, is number five, the project was canceled. That's right, canceled. You spent that day after day trying to chase this one client who was so excited to work with you and wanted to start in just a few weeks just to never hear from him again. Now, well, my friend, it was very likely canceled or the client changed his priorities. Now, one time I had a client who I had on my waiting list to do a really big job. And when I say big, it was like multiple five figure job. He was so certain that he would start at the beginning of April and I literally pushed away other clients 
at the end of March because I wanted that court, the course to have that project. And when the date arrived, the client disappeared and left me in the middle of nowhere. So when I realized this guy had basically changed his mind about doing this large project, I had to rapidly start to build myself again and I hadn't gotten that down payment. So the moral of the story is just because the client says he wants to, doesn't mean he will get that down payment in right away to show his commitment. Now, lots of things can happen from the time they agree to work with you to the point that they start, especially when they have other business partners involved in those decisions. So there you go. Those are the five most common reasons clients won't hire you. And here's my final advice to you. Don't dwell too much on any client that goes to you or decides to go in a different direction. Be prepared with the advice I gave earlier to not make these common mistakes. And then if a client doesn't hire you, just do more actions to land more leads. And it's the scarcity that makes us feel this desperation and what sometimes makes us make these mistakes. So if you want to avoid work famine, I have a downloadable in the description of this video where I'm gonna teach the two methods to get clients that other designers have used to generate thousands of dollars in their businesses. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet to get more tips like this one to get a stable design business. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.